Good morning, Acton, and welcome to Java with John, hosted by Town Manager John Mangirati. Java with John streams every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on Acton TV's YouTube channel. You can also listen live on the radio at 94.9 FM. Tune in weekly for important information from the Town Manager, Health Department, and Council on Aging, as well as a variety of special guests. Residents can contact us with questions or comments at 978-929-6611 or email manager at actonma.gov. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Job with John program. This is March 26th, and we're excited to have some uh, guests here this morning to talk about some things happening in town. As always, I'd like to first introduce our guests, and then we will get to them uh, later in the program for some individual updates. Uh, we're going to be speaking today with Heather York, the Director of Nursing, Sharon Mercurio, Council on Aging Director, David Manilin, a local volunteer who helps at the Senior Center with some uh, very important programs, and Scarlett Chung, who uh, works for a local non uh, nonprofit and is going to be sharing some information about some programs coming up uh, in the community. So. As you all know, this has been a weekly program. It's been something I've really enjoyed doing. Um, Sharon tells me that a lot of people watch it. Um, so I assume that, that that's true and I hope so. Uh, we try to connect and give people as much information as we can. Uh, we also are gonna try to uh, continue to mix it up a little bit. So if you have any ideas uh, for how to, to uh, improve the format or any, any components of the program, uh, we've already been discussing maybe some musical performances or other elements that we want to try to work in, but we'd like to have your feedback. So please contact Sharon or me directly. If you have any ideas or things you'd like to see us do, uh, this is a weekly program and there isn't any plans at this point to change that. So we want to continue to make sure we're adding uh, value and um, providing information to you every week in, in a way that that's helpful. Uh, so just a few things happening here in town. Uh, the town election, the annual town election is Tuesday. So uh, all, as you know, all voting precincts have been consolidated into the RJ Gray Junior High School. So check the website for more specifics, but that's the, the general uh, information. It's, it's Tuesday. Um, other things happening, there's a, a few board of selectmen joint meetings in the next two weeks, which I encourage you to um, uh, watch virtually. Uh, the first is March 29th. The second is April 6th, and they'll both be related to the budget and the capital plan. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump right in to uh, the pandemic uh, with Heather. Uh, there is I, I just wanted to mention that we are working hard with our neighbors, our neighbor eight of our neighboring communities, and with our legislative delegation. We're trying very hard to get permission from the state to become a regional vaccination site. As of yet, we have not been uh, granted that permission, and even if we are, we don't expect that it would provide us with vaccines for weeks. But uh, we're moving in that direction, and uh, we're. You know, we've been continuing to do smaller vaccination clinics as we can, but uh, there are plans in place. We're going to try to use the Kmart site actually as the location. So there's nothing to announce there yet, but you may have seen uh, information about there out there. So I just want to make sure, make sure you all know that it is a program that we're trying to bring forward, uh, but there is nothing to report on it as of yet. Uh, with that, Heather, uh, how are we doing? Um, are cases going down? Please tell me they are. Good morning, everyone. Um, unfortunately, John, the cases have gone up a little bit over the last days. Um, as we've seen in the state, the numbers have been going up again for the last week, um, which is a little concerning um, on a lot of levels. In Acton, as of this morning, we have 832 positive cases overall since the beginning of the pandemic. We have 22 people in isolation. 778 have recovered and 32 sadly have have passed over the last year. Um, speaking of vaccinations, um, I did want to mention a couple of things to folks um, that has um, been updated this week about vaccinations, particular things. Um, specifically, if you are um, past your 14 days after being fully vaccinated, um, you aren't required to test to travel any longer if you've traveled out of the state or out of the country. Uh, the only way, the only reason we would want you to test is if you were symptomatic. You know, the vaccine does keep us safer, but there is a small percentage um, of people that still could potentially become um, infected with the virus after being fully vaccinated. So anyone with symptoms should definitely get vaccinated and isolate 
uh, excuse me, get tested and isolate, um, even if you are fully vaccinated, because we are seeing that happening. With the variants out there, it's unknown um, at this point if the vaccines will cover all of those variants and to what extent. So anyone that is vaccinated should still do what we're doing now, um, wearing face coverings, avoiding large crowds, washing your hands, um, social distancing, uh, because there is always that chance that you could still become um, a positive case after vaccination. So just as a reminder, um, as of Monday, the travel guidance did update through the state um, as of um, it was initially an order and now it's an advisory. The main um, things that have changed with that is that travelers who have received um, a negative test result 72 hours before coming back to Massachusetts, um, they do not have to um, isolate when they get back. If you're not tested, if you choose not to be tested, you still do have to isolate. Um, for those who are vaccinated, again, um, you don't have to be tested when you're coming back to Massachusetts. Oh. And then anyone, the biggest change is anyone who has is entering Massachusetts from another state who was gone either from Massachusetts for 20, less than 24 hours or who are traveling into the state for less than 24 hours, the testing and the quarantining is not required anymore. Um, so that's a big change um, when that comes to the travel guidance. Um, as we know, people do travel over state lines uh, for you know different things. Um, we typically will you know go to the mall in New Hampshire. Not lately, but <laughs> we've done it um, before pan the pandemic. So that's a good change um, for people you know who are traveling to see family for a day. Um, so it's good news. Um, so other than that, you know, as John said, we are working to hopefully regionalize to get more vaccine into our area as we are one of the areas that does have a very high um, COVID diagnosis um, over the whole pandemic. Uh, but we are the one location in our area in Middlesex that there's really um, not a big um, grouping of vaccination sites. You know, a lot of the mass vaccination sites are quite a bit of, uh, of a distance for people to travel. So our hope is that we do get to um, get that regional vaccination site in Acton for all of the surrounding towns. So keep your fingers crossed <laughs> that we'll be getting that. Um, and that's about it for me. Thank you, Heather. Uh, nice, nice work as always. And uh, yes, hopefully we'll get news from the state on that regional site soon to provide another option for our community. Uh, Sharon, uh, how are we doing at the Senior Center this week? We're doing well, thank you very much. Um, it was nice before we started taping, uh, Mark Ducey from Acton TV, they've, they've been such a, a great help during this um, because as we know, many of our, our seniors are not on technology. So Acton TV has been a great way not only to share programs, but um, to share information. And um, two of their, their top viewed programs came from the Senior Center. So very exciting. We know people are watching um, and we're glad that we're able to reach out to them that way. Um, this week at the Senior Center, on uh, later on this morning at 11 o'clock, we have an American Writers Program focusing on Phil Sylvia Plath. On Tuesday at 7 p.m., uh, we've been doing a collaboration with the Board of Health. Um, we're going to be having Ted Reinstein from Chronicle do a program, New England Road Trips, No Mask, No Gas. Um, so that's open to anybody. It's at 7 o'clock. Um, there's a link that you need to pre-register for on our website, or you could reach out to Cheryl Ball at the Board of Health. On Wednesday at 1 o'clock, we have a real estate talk with Heather Murphy really trying to address dealing with um, trying to buy or sell your house during the pandemic. Um, so that again is open to anybody at one o'clock. Um, if you're interested in our book discussion, it will be April 7th at one o'clock. And the book for April is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. So get reading and you can join us for that. A um, couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, 
fuel assistance season runs from November through April every year. And what that is, it's a, uh, a program that you can apply for that helps um, offset the cost of fuel um, and heating. Due to the pandemic, the um, application date has been extended. So you can apply up until um, May 28th. The period they still focus on is that November through April. But um, if you haven't applied and you're struggling with your bills or whatnot, give us a call and we can apply. We're doing applications via Zoom and, and phone and virtually. So there's a way for us to safely get that information and get your application in. So you can give us a call at the Senior Center, 978-929-6652. We do still have the vaccine interest form up on both the town's website and the COA website. If you have not received your vaccine yet and you're interested in being notified if something becomes available locally, please fill out that form. And on the flip side, if you filled out the form and you have gotten your vaccine, it would be really helpful for us if you could let us know and we'll remove you from that list. Um, Glad that we have two of our wonderful partners here from um, both AARP Tax and Open Table. We've been doing a lot with them over the years. Um, Open Table, especially um, trying to, to deal with some food insecurity during this time. Um, so they've been a fabulous resource and we started a new program with them um, yesterday on Thursday called Healthy Helpings. So, um, Scarlett, thank you for joining us today to talk about that. That's all I have today, John. Thanks. Great work with the segue, Sharon. Scarlett, why don't you tell us about this program? Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So as Sharon said, um, I work at Open Table and we just launched a new program called Healthy Helpings yesterday. Um, and Healthy Helpings is a program offered through Open Table and the local councils on aging in Acton, Carlisle, and Concord. Our goal is to help seniors who are struggling to meet their basic food needs and those with heart diseases by showing them how they can use their diet to mitigate some of the symptoms they may be experiencing from their heart disease. To do this, we're using guidance from a registered dietitian at Tufts, and we will be using a dietary plan that's been recommended by the American Heart Association, and it's called the DASH diet. DASH, D-A-S-H, is an acronym that stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, and it helps decrease daily sodium intake, which has been linked to improving blood pressure. This meal plan emphasizes eating fruits, vegetables, and low-fat foods as sources of healthy nutrients. And the Healthy Helpings program will provide seniors with three days worth of meals, including ready to reheat meals and simple meal kits that come with preparation guides. You can expect prepared meals like baked salmon and chicken, and ingredients to create yogurt parfaits and tuna hummus pita pockets. These recipes will be very quick to make and you would not need any fancy kitchen equipment or cooking experience to make them. In addition to the food items, there will be games, prizes, and educational materials included to teach participants about not only the DASH diet, but the benefits of eating a variety of foods to achieve a nutritious, well-balanced diet. We know it can be difficult to afford healthy foods and to follow a new diet, so Healthy Helpings is here to help you do that. This program is ideal for seniors who could use community support in maintaining a low sodium diet, as well as seniors who want to learn to eat nutritiously and explore low sodium recipes on a budget. Open Table will be distributing these grocery bags every other week. So we started yesterday, the next distribution will be April 8th. And this is a free and confidential program so if you're interested in learning more about this program or signing up to join it, then please contact Act and COA for more information. That sounds uh, like a really interesting program. How, how many bags do you think you have of, to make available to people of every, every other week? So yesterday we distributed about 40 and we can expand um, depending on the demand. Because people have to sign up in advance. Yeah. Great. Well, hopefully um, we can get the word out, help you get the word out on that program through the COA literature and otherwise, and hopefully people watching can tell their friends. So thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Uh, David, David Manilin uh, is a resident and a volunteer and he helps our seniors over at the Senior Center and 
Dave, I'm hearing there's an extension on the taxes. Is that is that true? And, and please tell us everything else that you're going to tell us. Well, we had a little interruption in our tax season this time last year because the facilities at both the Council on Aging at the Senior Center and at the Acton Memorial Library had to close down. And our normal method of helping taxpayers in the Acton area is to have them come in in person and we go through their tax return with them. We help them get everything in order. We take care of filing it for them once they're happy with the return. And we had to come up with a new system this year because of course the COA and the library aren't open. And even if they were, I think people would have been hesitant to come in to visit us in person. So we set up a virtual return method. And of course that raised all the questions of security because people are understandably concerned when it comes to tax information about being online. So they've done a good job of making certain we have Chromebooks that are linked to the AARP server so that everything is encrypted and all the communications and we don't have to worry about people's home computers being compromised by viruses in holding the information. Now, the problem obviously for us is we cater to a lot of older people and they aren't necessarily very facile in scanning stuff into PDFs and so forth. So we advise them, well, you can take a picture with your phone, you can send that with your email. But sometimes they're not even comfortable with that. Fortunately, uh, Sharon has said that the COA will help out if they'll call and make an appointment that someone there will help facilitate the scanning of the documents so that they can get them to us and we can get some returns done this year. Normally by this time, we'd have about 200 returns done in this area and we're at about 35 right now. So we're running way behind. IRS gave us a break though, because we're gonna be able to keep doing this till May 17th. And the state gave us the same break. And then of course, they have all these changes that they're putting in. So depending on what happens in your tax return, we may have to hold it for a while till we know how to handle that change until our software does as well. Uh, so thank you, David, the important, so I'm sorry. If, some, if someone wanted to help, help with their taxes, what do they do? They just call you or they call Sharon? How do they do it? Well, what they do is a, there's a general uh, AARP site that they can request information either by phone or send in uh, information by email. And that's a national thing. And then the national people put those requests where they can be serviced. So if somebody from Acton gets in touch with them, they'll be in touch with our local coordinator who will give me the information and then we'll solicit them directly and tell them what we need from them. So that's how the process operates now. And I'll make the information, I think it's in the COA bulletin uh, where they can do that. So again, Sharon's been very helpful there. <clears throat> and, so, and so you said that there's only been 30 people that signed up and you usually have closer to 200. So we need to get people uh, contacting you, huh? We're, we're hoping to get them contacting us. Uh, one thing that uh, may make people feel a little better if they're having trouble planning to get this done is if you don't owe money, if you normally get a refund, nobody is going to come looking for you if you miss the May 17th deadline. That's interesting. Only the people that owe money <laughs> <laughs> need to be yes. concerned. So if you owed money last year and things didn't change much, you probably will owe money this year and you need to concern yourself more than somebody who just filed to get a rebate. But there's one exception to that. In Acton, uh, as some of you may know, if you are over 65 and you get the circuit breaker from the state, which is a rebate that could be as high as $1,150, Acton will match the previous year's circuit breaker amount. But the deadline to do that for this year is April 1st. And the assessor's office and Marty Abbott will be happy to help people out, but they'll need to have their 2019 tax return information 
in order to take advantage of that. So if we did their return, we'll help them find that information if they don't have it. Otherwise, they should scurry because April 1st is not very far in the future. David, could you, could you, that circuit breaker, could you break it, could you explain that kind of from the beginning, how that works? So, so yeah, maybe, maybe people don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah, the circuit breaker, again, as I said, for people who are over 65, and it can be just one of the two people in a married couple that have income less than specific amounts in the case of a married couple, this year, less than 92,000 of total Massachusetts income. And that's different from what they call adjusted gross income. That's all of your income, your tax exempt and everything. And your assessed value is under about $850,000. Then to the degree that your real estate taxes exceed 10% of your Massachusetts income, you get the difference back as cash, not as a deduction, but as cash up to a limit of $1,150. And I don't know why they called it a circuit breaker, but it's really a refund of taxes that you've paid. And then once you have that paperwork filed in your tax return, you can take that down to the assessor's office and show it to them and they'll... Well, it's the assessor's office uses the previous year. So this year, when we file a return, it's the 2020 circuit breaker. The assessor's office will this year match the amount that was on your 2019 return, which is last year's. So you need to have your last year's return to be in touch with the assessor's office with the Acton match. And when you say match, you mean they'll take it off your taxes, right? I, I don't know whether they take it off your taxes or give you a check because I've never been eligible for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sharon, do you know that specific uh, point of the program? I do not. Um, I usually leave that to Marty and Brian, who really okay. bend over backwards to help the seniors however they can with that. You, either way, if you did a circuit breaker last year, contact the assessor's office to make sure you get whatever's due to you. Right. right? And, and they need to get this year, get the 2019 return to the assessor's office and get that done by April 1st. So that's a deadline that's even earlier than the original tax deadline. Great. Well, thank you for, for doing this uh, for the community and for, for residents and in and, and the region. Uh, any other tax advice you want to give this morning? Well, I would just say that uh, this is going to be a very interesting year because they keep changing what has been exempt from taxes and sending out rebates. And of course, we have no idea whether the state will decide that that's taxable. And if so, how much or unemployment, uh, what they're going to do with that. So there's a lot of flux going on. I'd say people, unless they, as I said, owed a lot of money last year, it should probably wait if they can to get their taxes filed, even if they file after that May 17th deadline. Well, if, if any big updates come up, we'd love to have you come back and, and tell us uh, what's changed. So thank you for being here with us this morning and thanks for everything you're doing for the community. And thank you for having me. And so that's that wraps up our uh, job with John for Friday here. We look forward to seeing you next week and uh, enjoy the weekend, everybody.